Before we begin, I'd like to thank Square for providing review copies of Final Fantasy VIII Remastered for this video. To be clear though, they provided the PS4, PC, and Xbox One versions, and I bought the Switch version myself. It's been six years since Final Fantasy VIII has seen any sort of update or re-release. No mobile versions, no console re-releases over time, nothing. That changes now though in 2019 with the release of Final Fantasy VIII Remastered. So a quick heads up that each sequential version of the game I discuss is based off of the previous version. The versions of Final Fantasy VIII you may be considering on the original PS1 version, the 2013 Steam port, or Final Fantasy VIII Remastered. And there's no wrong way to play Final Fantasy VIII. Whatever your preference is, it's valid. Some of the flaws and issues we discuss will come across as either nitpicks or total deal breakers. It's up to you to decide, but my goal is to lay out on the table the information for you. Now with that said, let's take a look at every port of Final Fantasy VIII. We'll start with the original release of Final Fantasy VIII on the PSX. This version is also available on PS3, PSP, and Vita. The PSX version features 60 FPS menus, 30 FPS in the field and open world, and 15 FPS in battle, although the UI is 60 FPS. The game looks pretty great on a CRT, at least as far as backgrounds are concerned, though the character models leave much to be desired, even on a CRT. The North America and PAL versions together have distinct changes about the beginning of the game from the Japanese version. The changes are believed to do with accessibility for the wider audience outside of Japan. Tutorials were integrated into the story. The first two Guardian Forces, or GFs, Quetzalcoatl and Shiva, are given automatically if you leave the garden without obtaining them. Originally, they weren't. The timer in the fire cavern stops as soon as Ifrit is defeated. In the Japanese version, it didn't stop until you exited the cavern. A number of GFs can be missed in the Japanese version, but a few can be found in the final dungeon of the game if you miss them in the North America and PAL versions. That doesn't mean there are plenty of missable ones, though. On the flip side of accessibility, Tarama, Iron Giant, El Noyal, and Behemoth have different HP formulas ultimately buffing them. So let's talk about the localization changes. Zell's favorite food changed from flavored bread to hot dogs. Selfie's weapon is localized to Nunchaku in North America, and Shinobu in PAL regions because of laws in Europe. Some instances of blood and gore were toned down. Garo Garo's organs were changed to blue from red. This includes in the boss fight and on his card. And an armory in the final dungeon had blood-stained walls. That blood was then turned green. There was one bug in the Japanese version that let you junction the same spell to more than one stat, but this bug was fixed in the North America and PAL releases. And in comparison to the other versions, the PSX version takes a lot of time to load every screen you move to, every menu you open up, and every match of Triple Triad, and so on. I'd recommend the PSX version for the original experience, most preferably if you have a CRT and find charm in the models. You do miss features, graphical changes, and quality of life options offered in later ports, though the PSX version does retain a few things not in the other version, such as analog movement and vibration. But now let's take a look at the PC version and see what it has to offer. Next up is the original PC version. You would have to go out of your way to get your hands on this version and not to mention getting it working, but it's important for the ports going forward as they build off of this version. So some of the altered assets include higher quality models, portraits, and FMVs. Now comparatively, the UV mapping in the open world is kind of screwy as we can see here. Music is now in MIDI format and here's a quick comparison of what it sounds like. This version also has a new typeface. 60 FPS menus return along with 30 FPS in the field and open world and 15 FPS in battle, now including the UI. And the FMVs are 15 FPS. Now while it is a turn-based game, Final Fantasy VIII has timed inputs, so the lowered frame rate on UI can be seen as an issue and even have adverse effects. For example, the cursor that's supposed to flicker doesn't anymore, and boosting your GFs is made slightly harder. The PC version loads and saves really quick, and I'm not sure if this has to do with loading, but any of the original transitions that were in the game are just gone. There is no longer 
longer 360 degree analog movement. You can only move in 8 directions. And the controller support in general was shoddy to begin with. There are no button prompts unless you're using a keyboard, otherwise all the buttons are labeled B1 through B10. You also can't rebind anything to the triggers on a controller. Albeit something unique to the PC version was that it came with the separate Chocobo World minigame. Chocobo World used to be something played on the Pocket Station, and the Pocket Station was a Japanese exclusive device. So if you were playing on the PlayStation version, you could use the Pocket Station to play Chocobo World and collect exclusive items and power up your GFs. So if you're on the original version, you really gotta go out of your way to get the Chocobo World minigame items. While the PSX version had 15 save slots depending on how many memory cards you had, the PC version had 30 slots in two quote-unquote game folders. Adding to that, the vibration option was lost, but we also gained a sound slider in place of the option for mono sound. Some adjustments were made to the game's balance. Siren can now make Dark Matter without reaching level 100, and the Omega weapons now scale down to the party's level, originally they were at level 100. The PC version originally did release with a couple of bugs, but there was an official patch that was released that fixed a few issues. The intro to the game is also heavily out of sync from how it's supposed to be, and this was oddly never corrected in any version after. Now next up is the Steam version released in 2013. Take note, this is not the remastered version. And despite the release of the remaster, this version is still available on Steam as its own. The new Steam version featured support for newer versions of Windows, up to 1080p resolution, windowed mode and achievements. The game also now has a launcher, and this launcher lets you change graphics and controls. Though just as a heads up, your controls won't work until you're at the main menu, and the graphics options let you disable linear filtering or enable quote unquote original graphics. The launcher also lets you disable pausing the game on focus loss and disable fixed aspect ratio. Now for some of the altered assets. The FMVs in the Steam version have more compression than those of the original PC version. This is because when they upscale the FMVs from 48p to a little higher than 720p, poor encoding led to artifacts. Now the Steam version is home to a myriad of cheats that were added to the game. At launch, the Steam version had the Magic Booster, which would edit a save file to give you full stacks of some magic. This would include spells like Fire, Fyra, Thunder, Thundara, Cure and Curaga, and then some other boosters were patched into the game in 2014. You can now fast forward the game, which the manual claims goes up to 5 times the normal speed. The speed up is pretty inconsistent though, and can just jump around to any speed it feels like. And be careful speeding up the game, because if you go to an FMV with this, you may crash the game. Enable battle assistance, where ATB and HP are always full and limit breaks are always available. 9,999 damage were all your attacks, some limit breaks and GFs do 9,999. Max out AP for your GFs, which subsequently maxes out their levels, and max out Magic and Gil. Now the Steam version introduced a bug that I'm sure if you're familiar with the other Final Fantasy ports, you know what it is. Music in the field resets after battles. And meanwhile, Quizzicottle now uses an incorrect sound during its summon. Now lastly, let's talk about some mods. I won't go into detail about them, but there are mods that do restore the original PSX music, provide higher quality FMVs re-encoded from the original PC version, a fix for the Quetzalcoatl wrong sound during its summon, fixing the UV mapping in the open world, and many HD model and texture mods if those are your things. Overall, the PC version is lackluster. While it allows you to play Chocobo World, has a number of quality of life changes, and has the magic booster, there are bugs, a myriad of compatibility issues, and features lost from the PSX version like vibration, 360 degree movement, and 60 FPS menus in battle. Mods are almost a necessity, and even then, mods don't take care of everything you'd want. To my knowledge, there is no mod at the moment to fix the 8 direction movement like the mod for Final Fantasy IX, and the only fix for the frame rate is called Open 8, which is a rewritten game engine built from scratch. And besides, what if you're not looking to play on PC or can't be bothered with fan made changes? Well, let's take a look at Final Fantasy VIII Remastered. Final Fantasy VIII Remastered released on PC, PS4, Xbox One, 
and Nintendo Switch worldwide September 3rd, 2019. Hiroshi Harada, Tomohiro Kayano, and Tetsuya Nomura all worked on the remaster, meaning decisions and choices about the project were from the original heads of the game. Yoshinori Kitase during E3 2019 had said that the original plan for Final Fantasy VIII was just another direct port like 7 and 9, but mid-development they had decided to turn the project into a remaster and start improving the quality of the game's assets. Many turn credit of the delay of 8's modern port to the loss of the game's source data, an issue that has plagued Square for a long time and has been confirmed by the likes of Tetsuya Nomura, Yoshinori Katase, companies Square has worked with, and even Square's CEO, Yosuke Masuda. Make no mistake, if they had the game's original source data, we'd have better looking FMVs and backgrounds. But Katase's explanation offers some worthy clarity to the story. Not only was the lost source data a problem like it's been for Final Fantasy 7, 9, and 10, as well as Kingdom Hearts, they had ultimately decided Final Fantasy VIII needed more work to bring it up to snuff. And according to Nomura, .emu was brought in to handle analysis and porting to consoles, and Access Games was handling the model creation and implementation. Now let's take a look at everything that's changed in the remaster. Many of the models in the game were remodeled and or retextured. This includes things such as environment models, NPCs, card artwork, GFs, and playable characters whom have the most noticeable changes. Squall, Renoa, and Laguna also appear to resemble more of their modern appearances such as in Dissidia. There is a totally new typeface, not just recycling the previous one, and even has this nice new drop shadow to it. There is also now appropriate button prompts and the game supports triggers. The mini music is now gone and we have the original PSX soundtrack for the game. FMVs have once again been upscaled, though they are using the compressed Steam versions of the FMVs, not the original PC versions. As far as altered assets go, there's a really big elephant in the room here, and that's the upscaled backgrounds. They are incredibly blurry. A bilinear filter is applied to attempt to mask the pixelization of the backgrounds, but boy does it look blurry. There's a pretty stark contrast now between the nice sharp typeface and these clean models and that blurry background. Cost and time effective and meshes better with the new models than a pixelated background? Yeah. Best achievable result? No. The frame rate is identical to the previous PC versions. 60 FPS menus, 30 FPS in the field and open world, and 15 during battle including the menus. Controls are not customizable anymore unless on PC, but the defaults have changed from the original. In the PSX version, triangle is cancel and circle is menu, and the remaster effectively swaps those two. The console versions of the remaster are pretty homogenized this time around, the biggest difference between them being the resolution. The Switch version isn't exactly 1080p, but when undocked it looks incredible. And the Switch version also has backwards buttons for when you're driving and doing the train segment, not a real big deal though. PS4 version actually uses the same saving interface as other versions, and not the dumb, really slow default PS4 interface. And unfortunately, being the first time back on consoles in an extremely long time, they didn't add back in vibration. So the Chocobo minigame has been removed, forever living on in the previous Steam release. And those exclusive items from it are now available via Angelo Search. And Angelo Search is an ability you get during Disc 3. Achievements are the same as the Steam version, except with several of them removed. Ultimately, if you're a trophy hunter, your job's been made easier. In all the previous versions, it was possible to reset the game via a combo of buttons. But instead, you can just go to exit in the main menu. Now, the PC version of the remaster has a number of features not on console. Nomura reportedly told in a Famitsu interview it's because there 
requires more core players on PC. So the PC version has a brand new launcher and no longer has Square's DRM. With the launch options, you get text language, master volume, resolution up to 4K, full screen borderless or windowed, and which monitor to display the game on. Meanwhile, the graphics options in game include all of the launcher's options, plus brightness, anti-aliasing, both camera speed and the rate at which the battle camera triggers, individual volume sliders, and the same options found in the config in game. On top of the customizable buttons and keybinds, the PC version has more modern controller support like you'd expect it to. Like for instance, your controller will still work if you connect it after starting the game and the D-pad and triggers actually work. And the PC version can rebind everything on controller and keyboard in-game. Also, the PC version has autosaves. Now let's talk about cheats that which benefit those who do not have the time to invest into a lengthy RPG. For all versions of the remaster, there is the multiply the game speed by 3, which doesn't affect timers, thankfully, though it can have some quirky results if you use it all the time. You can turn off random encounters and enable battle enhancements, Battle enhancements meaning your HP and ACB are always full, and limit breaks can be used anytime. Now, PC exclusive boosters are where they really blow the door open on the game, and probably are there to discourage you from starting up Cheat Engine. So, Magic Booster is gone, but in its place we have... All items with some exceptions, all abilities, limit breaks, cards with some exceptions, and max out GF levels, Gil, and Magic. And as a reminder, these cheats on PC do disable achievements. And a quick change from console to PC is that the temporary boosters that you can turn on overlay on top of the game in the PC version. Now let's talk about issues that were fixed, and ones still present. Please keep in mind that any issues discussed are liable to be patched, as issues I've discussed in past videos have been patched before, so keep an eye out for official patches and updates from Square. I'll try to keep up with a pinned comment too for any patches they release. So, the music reset bug and Quetzalcoatl's wrong sound effect have all been fixed. Unfortunately, there is no analog controls in this version, so you're still stuck to walking in 8 directions. The UV mapping in the open world is actually still borked. There's also a music bug that I'd be surprised if it wasn't patched. Parts of the game that play the landing can instead play a MIDI version of it. You can specifically trigger it during the Dalet mission by loading the game during the save point in Dalet. Alright, now to wrap things up. The expectation of a remaster may be a bit misplaced here. Final Fantasy VIII is remastered in the sense of how long it's been since the game was updated. But, Final Fantasy VIII Remaster doesn't tackle the core issues that would otherwise make it a definitive experience. It is the highest quality port out of the box. If you're on PC, you may have a choice of either putting the work into modding the original Steam version, or buying the remaster. Let me be honest, I loathe having to recommend mods in the first place. I think the experience you get from the get-go is what's valuable, but you're free to make your own choice on mods. As far as playing on consoles goes though, your options might fall on things such as achievements or portability. Alternatively, you could hold off until there's mods on the PC version, or until Square updates the game themselves. Issues like lack of analog and 15 FPS UI affect Final Fantasy VIII more than they do 7 and 9, so I feel those are paramount issues to address on top of the backgrounds. However, I wouldn't hold my breath on some of those issues being addressed simply because of engine limitations. Though I am curious to see where mods can take it. And personally for me, I'm continuing my playthrough of the remaster on Switch. And that was a look at Final Fantasy VIII Remastered. I want to throw out another thank you to Square Enix for providing me the PC, PS4, and Xbox One versions of the game. And lastly, I want to thank you all for watching.